So before we start, I would like to first get a touch of the audience and what the audience is looking to hear about. Um, could you please raise your hands, everyone who is familiar with Polkadot? And now who is good, like very good, ex familiar, experienced, deeply experienced? Okay, so mostly not very good, okay. Um, how about WASM and smart contracts on WASM? A little bit experienced? Okay, thank you. And now very good experience, proficient expert. Okay. <clears throat> um, so the uh, speech today is uh, about bringing uh, user facing applications to Polkadot and about bringing businesses to Polkadot. And so why that is important? Some say that Polkadot is dead. Um, I don't believe it's true, but uh, there are some arguments to it. And I would like today to discuss this argument with you. And uh, <coughs> so Polkadot is obviously not a layer zero, it's not a serum, it's a fundamental solution, right? So it takes some time to bootstrap. And meaning that, uh, firstly, you have the fundamental stuff like layer zero, the RLA blockchain, and then um, the smart contracts blockchains like Astar, Moonbeam, they will take some time to, to develop and to then bootstrap and to get user attention and so on. So even if Polkadot has started like a um, few years ago, uh, it still needs some time to gain the traction. And it, it is okay. It is what to be expected. However, when is the right time to start resolving business problems? And it seems that the market, according to the feedbacks, is started to get anxious and started to feel like that, that is something that is not happening. And also, user-facing solutions mean users. And I believe that users are the only true metric to show the value. Because um, in the Web3 ecosystem, we have a lot of bubble, we have a lot of blockchains, and uh, a lot of people speculate that, um, that blockchains are created not for the value, but for the money, profit, forever, <clears throat> anything. And uh, that is why uh, the user is the only true metric of value. If blockchain has users, if blockchain has businesses, if blockchain solves problem, there will be users on it. And then, uh, the third point of why it is important to bring businesses and users is because um, the two benefits of uh, Polkadot are XCM and WASM. Um, EVM is not sexy. Like, why do you need another blockchain and have EVM on it? That doesn't work. You have Ethereum for that. And Polkadot, um, Polkadot's benefit is the ability to run your smart contracts on a much more proficient environment, which is WASM. So EVM and Polkadot doesn't make sense. WASM does. And also Polkadot brings XCM, but that's not the topic of, of today's, of my speech. So we'll not be stopping too much on that. But <clears throat> the point is. So today we are going to talk closely on the, um, on the, on these issues. Uh, especially in the in the WASM context and how this issue could be solved and what are the next steps that, that, that we as community as an ecosystem system should take and how we can work to uh, to move those businesses to Polkadot and help them get deployed faster. I'm going to talk about this high level and visionary stuff and then Dominic will show will be practical. He will show some code examples of open branch type chain, so to ink the projects you are probably familiar. Um, so, <clears throat> we are at seven to seven. Uh, you probably, if you did know me before, you probably know me as CEO of Super Colony. Now that story has ended, I have created a new company, which is seven to seven. Um, seven to seven is a venture studio. Venture studio means uh, having portfolio companies. And right now, this talk, uh, comes from the context of one of our portfolio company, which is BrushFam. Uh, BrushFam, the name comes from an, um, 
from, from a known brand, which is OpenBrush, which is a library similar to Open Zeppelin, but for the Vasa. You probably know it. Uh, hence the, the part brush, and then the fam. The fam is abbreviation of family, which means like brush family, family of, of different products, infrastructure products that make your development on VAS much easier. Hence the name brush fam. Now, the mission of the brush fam is very fundamental. It is um, it comes from, the, from our fundamental mission of the Venture Studio, and the mission is about mass adoption. Now, I would like to explain how mass adoption relates to, to things like infrastructure projects and uh, um, <clears throat> in our opinion, um, mass adoption is not possible if um, if the development ecosystem is not ready to be for mass adoption. Like, um, the, the functionality you can develop on Solidity and on Ethereum, it's very limited. And the user interface you can develop on Ethereum are very limited. And that is why something more advanced is needed. Because without advanced functional stuff, mass adoption will not be possible, right? So that is why, um, in our opinion, <clears throat> VASM is critical for mass adoption. And uh, projects and ideas and technologies like Forklot are critical for mass adoption because we must be thinking forward, we must be taking next steps in order to move forward, in order to make mass adoption possible. Without next steps, just creating copies of Ethereum or copies of Uniswaps, mass adoption will not just happen by itself. And that is why the mission of BrushFam is first of all about mass adoption because we make with BrushFam Wasm ready, and Wasm makes mass adoption. And the goal of the BrushFam is to create necessary infrastructure for Polkadot Wasm, which is a uh, project that they mentioned, Open Brush, Type Chain, and so on, and accelerate smart contracts development on Polkadot by providing in gear advisory, audits, and transponder services. <clears throat> so that was about BrushFam. Now let's come back to our problem. So, um, users, value, and um, <clears throat> why VASM? Now, let's uh, define it more in a concrete term. So, uh, if you compare VASM to Solidity, uh, like the first question that comes to your mind, right, when I say VASM is better. Okay, why it's better? Because it has more functional potential, that's point number one. Uh, what I mean by that is that, <coughs> like, uh, Solidity functional is limited. On Wasm, you can, uh, your functional is much broader, and that means that you can create much broader user interfaces. It's just the normal language that you can develop on, um, and create the user interfaces that are just expected from a normal web. And um, the, the second one is that it compiles to more performant code, which just means that VASM code is much more efficient. And uh, <clears throat> then the third one is that it allows to use code more efficiently, meaning that um, <coughs> like VASM is VASM, but when you use VASM, you probably will use Rust, and Rust has types, and these types um, allowing you to write uh, code efficiently, like for example, uh, using uh, different types, not just UN256, like you can use on Solidity. So that is the base, the base construction that just allows you to write your code more in a more efficient manner. And then the native speed execution, almost native, which Wasm allows. And um, then goes the other point, which is dev ecosystem. Wasm has much more broader dev ecosystem. It's not only about Web3. If you take Ethereum, it's only Web3, right? <coughs> it's only Ethereum, so it's a pretty closed ecosystem. Now, if, it's, if you say Wasm, if you say Rust, it's much more open ecosystem. Not only Ethereum uses it, and that means that now, as a community, as an ecosystem, we are becoming open, open to the world, to not be in our closed box, but open. That means that developers that are 
were not familiar with Web3, but want to be familiar. And they already know Rust, they can come to the Web3 and start developing it instantly, which is a significant point if we are really worried about mass adoption. And then um, <coughs> the popularity of Rust, which um, somewhere is uh, similar to the previous point, it's just about um, when you learn Solidity, you can only code on Ethereum. If you learn <coughs> Inc, that means you learn also Rust, and that means you can <coughs> do not only things on smart contracts, you can also do servers and so on. You just learn the normal backend language. <coughs> and the last point, but um, the one that is pretty important for me, because now I am the CEO, but um, I was an engineer myself, and the development experience was always one of my main priorities <coughs> when I did my uh, engineering stuff. And that is, for, for us, as far as the engineers, that just defines our feelings, how, like, how we feel when we do our daily job, right? That is, <coughs> on the job, we spend a um, lot of hours per day. I don't know how you spend, I spend uh, <coughs> 10, 16 hours a day, and uh, if you, if in that time you don't like what you do, which is developer experience, if developer experience is awful, you won't like your job, which isn't good. So that's why that point matters just very much. <coughs> <coughs> now, um, as we explained that WASM is so good and great, why it's, why it's not overcome Ethereum, uh, I mean Solid yet? Why it, there is so little applications on it? Why it's only a few of us even know about it? And the answer is very simple. It's only starting. The developer system is very new. And a lot of advantages that I was mentioning before, they are neglected because it's a new ecosystem. It needs time to be developed. And that's normal. We just need to, to overcome this. It's like a curve that needs to be overcome. <clears throat> now being more practical, um, if you look at the open picture, I uh, tried to gather uh, everything that was in my knowledge to what's happening in the uh, development um, ecosystem of WASM. Uh, and by WASM, I mean all... Um, possible contexts, including Inc. and Gear as well. As you see, Gear is included. Uh, so what we have? We have on the language level, we have Rust, which is ready and production ready. We have Inc. Uh, so by the way, the green <coughs> checkbox means fully ready. The gray checkbox means almost ready or in progress. So Inc, <coughs> it's... Um, it's not fully ready because uh, we are waiting for the four for the four version. It can be used right now. It's even on production on Chidden right now. Uh, Chidden is Astar parachain, if you don't know. Uh, but it can can be already used. But it's not stable. It's not audited. So that's why the gray checkbox. Uh, <coughs> but um, we are spoken today with the Inc team, and uh, the estimated deadline is the uh, uh, beginning of the January. So that means that uh, very soon the ink and contracts palette on Substrate will be fully ready. Um, <coughs> then the next thing which is tools, which is uh, also very important because um, this stuff is like the base layer and then comes the tools, then comes things like Open Zeppelin, which we, we all know in Ethereum, which is uh, Open Brush. Um, <coughs> And OpenBrush is fully ready. We, we maintain it. We keep it uh, up to date with the ink. Um, there is a lot of stuff uh, constantly happening around it, but we uh, <coughs> uh, keep it up to date. And then we have uh, token standard, which is in a serum we have ERC20. Uh, we came up with PSP22, which is uh, same token standard as a serum, but for WASM. Um, the token is, the standard is uh, fully approved and uh, it's widely used. It's the only standard there is, so we can fully rely on it. And then we have NFT token standard, which is 
Uh, also, right now in development, we are looking to develop a next version of NFT. We don't want to just copy um, the NFT standard that is on Ethereum. We don't think that makes a lot of sense. That's why we are developing the next version of NFT. And it is now in active development and will be ready soon. <clears throat> now, uh, Dominic will show you more practical stuff on this screen. Uh, but I can tell you in a few words, Open Brush, you already know. Solto Inc. is a tool that is about transferring your code from Solidity to Inc., hence the name. So, like, you take your Solidity code, you transpile it to Inc. It works. Dominic will show you. Which also supposed to greatly increase your development speed. It's like, imagine, you have code in Solidity, you want to move to Wasm. Now you have to take a few months to develop. With Solto Inc., you don't need that. You just Fast, bam, it's working. <clears throat> we have Swanky, which is tool developed by Astar. Uh, Swanky is in CLI for uh, Node, to raise up your Node and test things. Um, we have TypeChain, which is uh, a tool that is useful for front-end development. It generates types, uh, and to use that in front-end development. So my point is that <clears throat> All that I gathered here is base stuff that, <coughs> need, that is needed for active development. And the fact that it is here means that this ecosystem is close to being ready. It's very close. The moment Inc. 4 will be released and audited, the moment all these gray checkboxes become green, the ecosystem is fully ready. So now is the perfect time to start active development on it. Now is the time. Now on the adoption stuff, we have um, things that are needed to, like things like today's speech, things that are needed to tell to the people that stuff is ready, like, you know, because when a group of developers develop something inside, nobody would know about it if they don't tell you about that, right? That is why it is very much needed to do some marketing and tell people that stuff is ready. You can start using it because if no people use it, nothing comes out. That's why we did some conference. Uh, it was done um, in the previous autumn. Um, <coughs> we gathered a lot of people, and it was uh, quite a success. As it was like a first step. Also, uh, Astar was doing some workshops around adoption, so stuff is happening. But what else we lack? <clears throat> I think that right now at this point we need more conferences, we need more tutorials, we need more workshops, we need more speeches like that. So much more um, talent is needed, much more education is needed on this stuff, much more education for the development is needed, and <clears throat> use cases are needed. Not recently, uh, Sota uh, posted a discussion about um, doing showcase projects. And there is a bounty proposal on a treasury which um, already passed or will be passing and uh, <clears throat> we'll be doing showcase projects in order to demonstrate the power of ink. Not bad, not <clears throat> what's, what's better than not show an example. So, <clears throat> as I said, now that the majority of the infrastructure is almost ready, it's time to start working with businesses and getting those businesses deployed. That is the end of my speech. Dominic will continue with uh, practical stuff. And this is my Twitter in case you want to stay in touch. And this is the link to the OpenBrush website. Thank you for listening. My name is Dominic. I'm head of engineering at Brushfam. And first, I want to ask you a question. Uh, who is familiar with Solidity? Solidity smart contract. Have you, who has developed some smart contract in Solidity? Okay. And who has developed some smart contract on Ink? Okay, so more people are 
familiar with Solidity. Great. Okay. Uh, first thing I have to mention, uh, all the tools that I will showcase to you today uh, have been created because we were working on a solution or on a solution to a problem uh, and we found that we are not we either we are lacking something or that we are uh, not really fast in our development so for example open brush which is the standard tool standard contract uh, library for for ink smart contract has has been created because we were working on on an application uh, which is already exists in solidity and it relies on a lot of standards from open zeppelin like erc20 and stuff like that so and th there were no no such standards in uh, for, for Polkadot. That's why OpenBrush was created, that's why PSP22 was created, and a lot of other uh, smart contract standards. And yeah, uh, another tool which we have is Salt2Ink. And what Salt2Ink does, it transpiles, as Markian said already, it transpiles your Solidity code to Ink. And this tool was created because, again, when we were working on on a project uh, which we were recreating from Solidity to Ink, uh, we found out that it takes a lot of time to to just write the Ink contracts because of the syntax differences between Solidity and Rust. And so we created a tool which will be able to transpile the code. Uh, and then you then you just need to check it for some for some issues if there are some because it's still a program, so it may have some issues. And another thing, another tool that we created, Type Chain, was again created uh, because we were testing uh, the smart contract that we created, and we faced some issues. So like oh, maybe some smart contract calls were reverted because we didn't have we, we were passing some incorrect types which typescript was not uh, telling us about that okay you should pass another type that's why we created type chain for polkadot okay so let me let me show you some practical stuff Uh, I will need to Okay. So first first thing that I will sh show you is salt wing. Let's imagine that uh, there is a new parachain and you want to start uh, developing some smart contracts on this parachain. And what such parachain needs the most? You guessed it, it's a meme token. So uh, what you do, you are experienced Solidity programmer, but you don't, you don't really know how to use ink or how to write a uh, smart contract in ink. You're not that familiar with Rust uh, and you don't really read the documentation because you're a developer and there is not much information on the internet about your specific issues, how to, how to solve some issues uh, as opposed to Solidity where you can find a lot of stuff on the internet. So you go to, to our GitHub repository, uh, which is right here, 727 Ventures and you may find a tool called salt to ink it's still in this is the repository 
it's still in the development phase, so uh, you may face some issues uh, while uh, while transpiling your project. Uh, what what this does is it transpiles Solidity to Ink and uses utilizes OpenBrush macros uh, for uh, in, inside your project and uh, it, it currently supports only uh, single files, so, but we are working on that. We are working on uh, eliminating all the critical issues and also on parsing multi-file projects. So uh, in very soon, you will be able to transpile, for example, the whole Uniswap from Solidity to Ink in a few steps and with some time spent on on fixing some potential stuff which may be optimized for Rust. Okay, so I have created this file, shibainu.sol. It's a it's a simple ERC twenty uh, ERC twenty contract, and I have downloaded uh, Sol to Ink from the release pages, uh, from our repository. And I have everything in this one folder. So uh, here you can see uh, my salt to ink. Here you can see my contract. And when I go to this folder, simple as that, uh, okay. I will run salt to ink, I will pass shibainu.so as the argument and file save. So it created a contract for me uh, and it created it inside this directory. We can see cargo tomo, which is the definition of the, of the project and we have leave.rs which is the contract itself. So, this is the ink contract and it works, right? Now let's see. So, if we go to this folder, we will try to build it. Cargo contract built. So, we wait. It's building. Seems like the contract is working. Uh, I will show you. Yeah. Um, it has some issues, as we can see. Uh, as I mentioned before, I wanted to show you that it's not perfect yet and that when some, something is created by a program, you should recheck it. So these files, uh, th these lines were not uh, formatted by the by the Rust Rust FMT. So we have double import, which is one uh, issue. Then here uh, we have error on line 104 that this error wants to bubble up, but this is inside the constructor. So uh, it cannot bubble up. We have to revert the call with expect. Uh, we say it fails on mint, so we will say mint failed. Okay, we have some other errors. And what is this? So as you can see, what what probably was in the original Solidity code was that they were using or relying on the on the SaveMath library. We and in Solidity you're able to uh, call the library functions on the types itself. So uh, it parsed it in this way also here. Uh, in the development version, it already does another thing, but to showcase you how you can deal with this when using salt ink, uh, you will simply just call the function and supply the arguments to this function. So 
you will just rewrite it to the original, to, to the desired state. And yeah, this is basically all over all, all the all the errors that we get uh, from from this are originating from this uh, function usage or library usage. Uh, so we will quickly fix all the stuff, but you can already see that. Uh, creating such file was not really that much time consuming as you would maybe expect. So check the value. Uh, okay. You might be asking, uh, why do I do it this way? Uh, and I will tell you that in the original Solidity code, uh, we were reading some value from the from the from the storage from mapping. So we got uh, balances dot uh, balances uh, of recipient. And we added an amount, so we called the add function from the library, from the save my library on that, and added an amount. So, so to ink, uh, thought that there is some function on such type, but since it is a primitive uh, u128 or uh, unsigned integer, then it doesn't exist here. But we can simply just fix it in this way. And self-add. Okay. Some another. Okay, we have two more. Have stuff value. So stop. And We also need to add clones here because we are returning a string. Um, and yeah, so in few minutes we have the working contract. Uh, we will check cargo contract build if it builds. It seems it is building. So. Obviously, this is a this is a simple ERC twenty contract with some added functionality, but so it may not be that like oh wow that's so amazing. But what we are working on is that any code will be transpilable by Soltwing, which should uh, ease the way for existing Solidity solutions or for for companies that already have some solutions working on Solidity or on Ethereum or EVM chains and want to come to Polkadot or to Substrate Smart Contract, uh, it will ease their way, as Markian said, uh, from several months. It can uh, bring the time down to less. 
So that's the main purpose of soldering. Obviously, since it's computer generated, there may be some stuff which I would, for example, here we call self.approve, which is a change to the storage. And here we read from the storage. So I would first, uh, 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 so I would first take this value here and say let allowance and pass it here. So stuff like this is what you need to check after you work with Soto Inc. But saves a lot of time. Also, good thing to do, but it's not just for Soto Inc. That's for that's for any any ink contract or any Rust application. I would say is to run it, run Cargo Clippy to to see if there are some. Uh, things you can optimize or make more rusty. Uh, obviously, here are some. Uh, sorry, here are some uh, hints originating from the macro expansion of of OpenBrush and from Ink. So we can hide these. Well, I have a helper here. You can hide these, and this is not only for not only for Doing. This is also for anything. You can hide this with these three clippy allowances, I would say. And now we see that we only get our warnings for our specific uh, contract. That was a little live hack I wanted to showcase. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to fix these because it's just remove return statement and stuff like that. Uh, maybe I will show you something more interesting than this, than removing Clippy hint, and that's testing of such contract. So I have prepared uh, all the stuff that I need for, for testing with, with type chain. And that's type chain Polkadot, some Polkadot API, and also ES config, and prepared a type chain comp compiler options where we just need to specify uh, where are the project files. So, in, in case of this project, it's in our uh, Shiba Inu directory. Uh, there is the contract, uh, and what we will need to do is artifact path, so path to the artifacts of the contract, uh, which we can find after building in target ink. We will take uh, this one dot contract. We will rename it to something that makes sense. So dot contract file move to artifacts. Uh, metadata we will need to move to artifacts and so this is prepared now and we also say where will be the typed contracts located so in this case in it will create a folder called typed contract Okay, so what now? I have created tests.ts. I have prepared some stuff which I can now explain. So, first of all, uh, I'm sorry, I will. I also have prepared some scripts. So, for, for building. Uh, this this script will uh, build the contracts and create the type chain types. Uh, you can also find this uh, find this script on on the type chain repository in README. But I will just showcase that so you are not confused why I write one one comment and it works and if you do it it doesn't. So it's because of this I have 
prepared some uh, scripts. Okay. So, so to have some types, I will call npm run build. And this will generate types. And as you see, it's in the same folder as I mentioned in the type chain compiler.json. So we have type contracts. I will not go over this because it's a lot of a lot of classes, but what it basically does is you will see that and what it basically does it create types for your contract. So uh, makes your either integration testing or front end application uh, easier to write. Okay, and you can see that one error is gone now, or two errors are gone now, and those are, uh, I don't know if you have noticed, but uh, constructors and contract were uh, underlined with red. Uh, now it's not because the files already exist, so I will import constructors from uh, where my type chain files are located and from the constructors and name of the contract which I want uh, to use and then also contract. Uh, what's the purpose of the constructor is to create a contract, a contract class and what's the purpose of the contract is to create an instance of the contract on which you can then call uh, the contract functions. Uh, I will now run substrate contract node. I have an alias for that, so it uh, runs with uh, with some additional uh, flags for testing. Okay, so. We have a test here, and so what we need to first do is to create an API promise for Polkadot API, uh, create some accounts, so keyring, uh, we will add the uh, default accounts, Elise and Bob, and oh, now I will start some, I will try to go here. Okay, uh, so we will specify min amount, so let's say we will mint million tokens, and now we will create the constructor of, of, the, of the contract, Shiba Inu, so this is the constructors and constructors and uh, if we want to create a new uh, instance of the constructor, we will call new, provide the name of the contract. So, uh, this will create a new contract, obviously. So, we will, this, these are parameters originating from the ink smart contract. So, uh, to show you that I'm not lying, Let's see, uh, the parameters of the ink constructor are name, symbol, decimal, total supply, token owner address, okay. And here we want to have, uh, right, one second, name, well, let's say Shiba dot, uh, symbol, let's say S dot, decimals, and you see that everything is typed, so I will be sure that the application will work uh, with the correct types. With the correct types, so a decimal, let's say 18. Total supply, let's say uh, mean amount. And token owner address, we will give it to Alice. Address okay. Data formatting okay. So this will create a new contract, and it will give us the address of the contract, obviously. So uh, this is an async function because it calls the blockchain. 
and now we can create a wrapper around that contract. So, uh, so new contract, we supply the address of the contract, uh, the default signer, which will be the default signer when uh, doing calls to the contract, and API, which we are using to communicate with the, with the blockchain. So we have a contract, and now let's see what we can do. Uh, we can transfer some tokens. So, for example, contract dot uh, transfer uh, tx because we want to do a tx uh, transfer, and we will transfer to Bob Bob dot address. That's again a function which was defined in the ink smart contract and amount we will send him 10,000 tokens okay you can also add some options like gas limit uh, so let's say something like that it will not be needed but we can do it and we also need to evade it because it's an asynchronous function and yeah we also will now send from Bob but we need to first contract with signer that means that the signer which we provide will initiate the the function so let's say Bob and uh, dot tx if we want to do a transaction transfer to Alice and let's say 5000 okay so we will now run it I hope it will work but it should and it does it's passing but we didn't test anything we just show that it works so Bob should have 5000 uh, let's say on amount Bob away uh, contract Query because we want to do a query uh, to the contract and we want his balance balance of Bob dot address okay uh, Alice amount Alice contract balance of Alice dot address and total supply total supply very total supply so we have some information from the blockchain about the contract and now we can test it so expect amount Bob uh, value okay we expect it will be okay that it will not return error and from the definition we can also see that this function uh, won't fail uh, why is it the result it's because uh, so doing uh, transpiles every function uh, as a as a result because it expects that every function can fail uh, it will be fixed it's not a problem not a bug but it saved some time on development uh, not save some time but fix some issues for us okay so uh, amount box should be 5000 so to be equal uh, we will do it to string and 
compare strings. Okay, we also want to see how much Alice has, and she should have 995,000, and the total supply should be mint amount. Okay, so now when we run the test, we see that it works. Okay, so um, I think that's all. I I can maybe I can show more if you have any questions. Okay. Hello. Ah, Hello. Okay. Um, is there a uh, compiler number that you have to do this above? Uh, to, is it compiler sensitive for the solidity compiler? Um, can it handle uh, assembly? And do, do you have to do much work with the unit testing if you've already got something written? Uh, so, uh, if Saltwing is able to to handle assembly inside Solidity, yeah. uh, for now not, but it's in in the plans. Okay. Uh, it's one of the later plans, but yeah, we were thinking about it, and and it's in the plans. Uh, <laughs> uh, another question was. Uh, you, uh, you mean about uh, about solidity version? Uh, no, it's not. It's not dependent on it. So, sorry, I cannot hear you well. <laughs> if I if we've already got lots of unit tests written, then they don't need to be changed. Presumably, they they very. There's only a tiny bit at the top that needs to be changed with unit oh. tests. If I already have loads of TypeScript in solid, for Solidity, it can. It's this seems to be independent. Well, or is that? I'm I'm not sure I get your question. <laughs> I want to avoid having to redo all my unit tests. Uh huh. Uh, so does this? Does that, do I have to redo my unit tests or? So, so after, okay, okay, I think I understand. So you have a Solidity, uh, Solidity contract, you have unit tests for Solidity contract, you use Saltwing and you want to use, uh, and you don't want to recreate the unit tests for, for the in contract. Uh, I would recommend to do that. But it's not, it's not that hard to, you, you just need to adapt from hardhead or from whatever you're using to when using type chain it's not that hard you can uh, basically copy paste the unit tests of solidity to ink and change some uh, stuff to work with polkadot api so but i i sh i recommend having those also for the ink contracts yeah okay any other questions? I can. <laughs> was to develop. Sorry? How hard it was to develop? Uh, it's like raising a kid. When you ra when you are raising your kid, uh, it may be hard, but you are enjoying it. So, <laughs> good answer. And uh, about how hard it was, it's not how hard it was because we have done the easier part and now we have to make it work in every case. So some cases uh, that we didn't yeah, think that's about. one less percent. Uh, I'm sorry? The one less percent is the hardest. 
Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. So. Um, yeah, I want to ask about money, uh, but not your money, but uh, about uh, uh, like money. Uh, how much money Soto In could save? Could save for new business who want. Uh, 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 that's hard to say, but if you uh, if you have uh, some if you have a robust application uh, which may take, for example, I don't know, uh, three months to develop, just like you have already existing application in Solidity and you want to recreate it in, in for example, in, in Inf, uh, it may take some time, uh, which I cannot uh, say how much, because I don't know the size of the application, but let's say two months, and also for, also for the testing and stuff, you want to ensure it's working well. Uh, so, Salt to Ink in its final stage should be just, uh, making sure that the contracts do what they are supposed to do, so some unit tests. So, hard to say, but maybe such application could be done in like two weeks or three. Well, of course, it depends on what application, and it's really hard to say, but all you need to do when using this tool uh, in the final stage, in my, uh, as I imagine it working, is just test the code uh, and have it maybe audited. So, that, yes. So, yeah, I, I think it can save a lot of time. Oh, I can say from my experience, when I started creating it, uh, when we were working when we were transpiling Solidity project to, to Inc. Uh, and this idea was born. Uh, it was a lot of, a, a lot of uh, rewriting, like the, the order, of, of, uh, order of keywords in Solidity is different than in Rust, obviously. So uh, this took a lot of time, like, these have to be here, this has to be here, this has to be here. So I, I just created a little tool which will just uh, transpile uh, interfaces of Solidity to, to ink trades. Uh, and it already saved a lot of time because with the, with the trades, I already could just copy paste the, the trades into the implementation of the trade and just uh, write the code. So this alone could uh, have save me, uh, if, if it take, for example, okay, those contracts were really long, so uh, those were like uh, 200 lines long uh, interfaces, just interfaces, uh, but uh, when you take some formatting into account, but uh, rewriting such interface could take maybe half an hour, an hour, and with the very, very, very first uh, version of Sotwing, it was uh, in one second. <laughs> so, yeah, that's maybe for your imagination, how could it work in big applications in the final stage, so. <laughs> Hello. Um. Do you think this is a good way for Solidity developers to learn Rust? I think so. Uh, good question, a very good question, because I wanted to uh, showcase this, but I forgot, so thank you for that. Uh, currently, it only supports uh, single, single files, but it will, uh, it will, uh, it already, in the development version, it already creates uh, multi-file structure, so you have uh, your trades, you have implementation of the trades and the contracts, so everything is logically separated from, from each other. Right now, this is just in one file. Uh, but you can see that, okay, uh, he will look 
at the original code and see uh, event approval. And now he looks into ink code and see abstract approval. Okay, so this is maybe event, ink event, Google ink event, and uh, time saved on learning. Then what does it mean storage key? Open brush storage unique key. Google open brush storage unique key. Okay, this is for upgradable storage. Time saved again. Uh, here we are missing one field, but uh, it's not relevant for this speech. And okay, ink constructor. Uh, you get it, what I mean. I, I think that it would uh, help learning as well. So. Any other questions? Okay, thank you.